Hi everyone. The term Nuestra Senora, the Virgin Mary, was commonly used in Spain to name various ships, especially during the age of exploration and colonial period, typically honoring the Virgin Mary. This naming convention was widespread, so there were many ships with names beginning Nuestra Senora, followed by different titles or place names, like Nuestra Senora de la Concepcion, Nuestra Senora del Rosario, or Nuestra Senora de la Tocha. If we're looking at a vessel referred to as Galley Nuestra Senora 1275, this might be a specific model or recreation aimed at representing a type of Spanish galley from the medieval period, possibly as early as 1275 or inspired by designs from that era. However, no famous historical record of a specific Spanish galley from exactly 1275 with the name Nuestra Senora seems to exist. Instead, it may be a modern model or artistic representation inspired by Spanish maritime naming conventions and historical designs. In 1275, Spain and other European maritime powers used galleys primarily for trade, coastal defense, and military purposes. These vessels were typically powered by rows of oarsmen, sometimes combined with sails for longer voyages. A Spanish galley from this era would have had a sleek, elongated hull and a raised stern and bow. The bow often featured a reinforced structure for ramming, and many galleys were equipped with crossbows, small cannons, or other projectile weapons as artillery developed. Galleys played a crucial role in the defense against piracy and in regional conflicts throughout the Mediterranean. While the Nuestra Senora depicted here might be more of a romanticized or artistic interpretation than a historically documented vessel, it reflects the typical design and iconography of Spanish galleys from the 13th century. Such ships would have been integral to the Spanish maritime presence during a time of both conflict and commerce in the Mediterranean. It is believed that galleys, in the modern sense of the word, first appeared in the Mediterranean basin, likely in Venice, around the 7th century. Information about galleys from before the 12th century is extremely scarce. Meanwhile, this type of vessel actively developed until the 13th century, after which it remained largely unchanged in design for centuries, becoming part of the military fleets of European countries until the 18th century. A lot of information has been preserved about galleys from this period, including drawings and even models. These were relatively small ships with long, narrow hulls, open decks, low sides, and shallow drafts. The oars were nearly twice as long as those of ancient ships, and each oar was rowed by a single rower. There were two masts, a forward mast and one in the middle of the hull. The ship's displacement, by modern estimates, reached 80 tons when fully loaded. Later, from the 15th century, another trend prevailed, multiple rowers were assigned to each oar. On later galleys, the number of rowers per oar could reach 5 to 6, and sometimes even 7 to 8, and instead of steering oars, a rudder was mounted on the stern post. When sailing, the oars of the galley were placed in a row perpendicular to the hull, secured in special brackets. This arrangement was designed for long voyages under sail. There were also lighter, simplified galleys, such as sail or frigates, galeots, fusters, brigantines, scampavias, and other types. These had less combat value than the pure Gallia Sotil and were primarily used for messenger services and coastal defense. Some of these ship names were later used for entirely different types of purely sailing vessels. The autonomy of the galley was quite limited, mainly due to the small water supplies on board, as rowers required a large amount of water. Fast crossings were only possible with good supplies, which were provided by auxiliary sailing vessels that accompanied the galleys or rendezvoused with the map designated points along the route. The most effective voyages were along well-equipped coastlines between supply bases, from harbor to harbor. 
With the development of shipbuilding and, in particular, artillery, the advantage of sailing vessels became apparent. While in boarding combat, the galley was more or less comparable to a sailing ship, as it carried a similarly sized boarding party, and in certain conditions, it even had an advantage due to its maneuverability and independence from the wind. In predominantly artillery combat, it became far weaker than a sailing ship with a broadside gun battery, which also had a higher freeboard that made boarding more difficult. Medieval galleys were not only warships but also commercial vessels. Since sea voyages in the Mediterranean were far from safe in the early Middle Ages, the large crews of these ships were quite useful. Expensive cargoes, such as gold, were often transported on long ships, galleys, which, despite their relatively small cargo capacity, could defend themselves or escape from a chase if needed, unlike the practically defenseless, wind-dependent round ships, sailing vessels. This marks a sharp contrast to the ancient era when warships had no space even for the comfortable accommodation of the crew, let alone any cargo, and the transportation of goods was almost entirely the domain of round ships. Having reached their peak in the 15th century, commercial galleys quickly disappeared in the first half of the following 16th century. Spain was heavily dependent on the actions of galleys in the Mediterranean, yet it never created a unified galley fleet with centralized bases. Many Spanish galleys were based in Italian territories, Naples, Tuscany, Sicily, Genoa, and had Italian crews and commanders from Italian aristocracy serving in the Spanish military. At the height of their power, Spanish galley fleets, supported by Spain's small island holdings, controlled the entire central Mediterranean. The decline of the Spanish galley fleets began during the war with England, during which they suffered repeated defeats over the course of 30 years. On April 19, 1587, for example, Francis Drake, with four galleons, decisively defeated a flotilla of ten Spanish galleys off Cadiz. Serious defeats also awaited Spanish galleys in the Mediterranean, despite the service of such renowned masters of galley tactics as the Genoese Andrea Doria, the victor of Lepanto. As a result, armed, artillery-equipped sailing ships ultimately took the central role in the Spanish fleet, and although galleys were still used, they played a secondary role, primarily for amphibious operations and troop transport. Thanks for watching.